Welcome back to another episode of the program. Today we are going to talk about Neanderthals and Homo sapiens sharing the, the same cave 50,000 years ago. So on this channel there, we talked about discoveries in, in Greece and Morocco, anatomically modern humans, dating back as far as 315,000 years, 200,000 years. Yeah, there are a lot of different dates that are tossed around, but as far as mainstream goes, very recently it was changed to 54,000 years ago that Homo sapiens came to Europe. Who really knows, but w this is all centered in Europe. So just keep that in mind when all these dates are being tossed around. This article centers on uh, southern France, which is the Garot Mandarin. You guys have probably heard of it. It's a limestone cave in southern France. So let's just get a nice aerial view here. It's east of the Rhone River right here that you can see. And it's pretty close to uh, the Gulf du Lion or the Gulf of Lion here to the south. Part of the reason why that, that uh, the specimens found in um, specimens, meaning like finger bones or teeth, mainly teeth. Part of the reason why it was so well preserved was because of this wind, uh, the mistral, which is a northwesterly wind that blew sediment and dust and stuff into the mouth of the cave. And it just left a nice sediment layer that shielded it from, um, you know, the elements and, and kind of kept it intact. Uh, it has housed Neanderthal in human history for over 100,000 years. As more of a shelter, the cave withstood the hands of time because of its location. It's also the place where Neanderthals and humans came together in Europe, says Ludovic Slimak, who's the head archaeologist of the project. The layers hidden beneath the cave show around 50,000 50, years ago, humans made their first incursion into the cave. There are 12 layers of archaeological uh, deposits that show inhabitants of the cave were both Neanderthal and human. What I was talking about before, the morphology of the teeth, and I think the pace at which, just to give you guys an idea, the pace at which they were finding teeth was about once every 10 months or so, they would find some teeth and... And what Slimak was saying was he got he waited until he had about nine, but yeah, about nine teeth. Then he sent them over to the labs to get uh, uh, analyzed. That's just to give you an idea of how long this ta this takes, which depending on how you look at it, might be a really long time or it might be a pretty short time, considering the type of information we're getting back. Uh, Slimak continues using innovative technology. We were able to distinguish when the last Neanderthal and the first human fires were built in the cave. Researchers study the parietal concretions of the Grot Mandarin site, or traces of soot that collected on the roof of the cave after fires. Uh, over time, a thin limestone crust covered the soot. As condensation and water runoff inside cracks of the cave formed, the crust froze and fell to the ground in small portions of limestone deposits. These humans would come into the cave, have a fire for the night, that soot that came as a result of the fire floated up to the roof. And over time, there was a thin limestone crust that covered the soot that would fall to the ground after it froze because of the condensation. So from there, you can see there's probably thousands and thousands and thousands of these things that would fall to the ground that would form a nice pile. And from that pile, under a microscope, they could see these layers, which would, quote, form a barcode and... You know, each time period has a unique thickness in the, in the quote, barcode. Just like tree rings, they could just, you know, go back and count and place basically the, hu the dates of the human and Neanderthal inhabitations. So they were coming in and out. And what Slimak is, is surmising here is not only were humans co-mingling with the Neanderthals, but he could, he could tell the time between occupations. And I think it came up to only a few months. And he also um, showed that there were 500 different phases of occupation in the cave as well. So that's how meticulous and how detailed they can get just from uh, that, you know, that, that northwesterly wind blowing stuff, blowing all that uh, dust and preserving the cave essentially for, you know, well over 50,000 years. Um, just another thing, uh, Neanderthals were already occupying Europe for thousands and thousands of years, uh, well before these first humans came as outsiders. As far as we know, the humans were coming, the Homo sapiens rather, were entering this part of France 
I don't know if you want to say encroaching. I don't know if that's a good enough word, but they were entering Neanderthal territory for sure. Uh, another thing that he noted were uh, two indications showing that humans and Neanderthals likely had some interaction. That, Like I mentioned before, the, the time between was short, so he can't imagine them not uh, passing each other by, which would make a lot of sense, depending on what your outlook is on how many Neanderthals there were compared to Homo sapiens. Because some people think that Neanderthals were few and far between, and that they were more uh, solitary and, and less uh, communal than Homo sapiens. But, you know, the, I've also heard the alternative. Other people have said that they were almost very similar to humans in terms of uh, their cooperation skills, but I've, I've heard everything from everybody. So, uh, secondly, Slimak and his team uncovered the territory of Neanderthals based on where they sourced their flints, which makes sense. Neanderthals had already lived in the area for thousands of years and knew where everything was. So some flints came from the Alps, which, uh, if you zoom out, is this mountain range here. Um, also the place where they found Otzi the Iceman. Um, so there's a lot of significance here. Um, so yeah, they, they, from judging by this location, it was probably exactly due east. They probably found it somewhere there. Others from Providence and still others from the western side of the Rhone River, which would be over here as well. So yeah, so the Neanderthals, they... they they had been successful in the area for a long time, so that may, that totally makes a lot of sense, logically. Uh, humans only inhabited the cave for 40 years, or one human lifetime. It seems unlikely they would have known all the information that the Neanderthals knew without some sort of interaction. They likely provided information about the territory to humans who had come from elsewhere. Um, so, there, there are other, another detail about uh, Homo sapiens is that uh actually one of the um one of the theories about how they uh they defended themselves against the neanderthals and were able to outcompete them uh was their ability to cooperate and communicate and to uh transmit uh ideas and to uh to teach basically or coordinate with other homo sapiens in an, and talk about abstract things and like a time and place in the future, right? So they could say, hey, at three o'clock, let's meet next to the river and then we'll talk about how we're going to um, uh, outmaneuver these Neanderthals, right, for example. And apparently Neanderthals did not have that capability. So it does make sense to me that if humans did come across the Neanderthals, the information that they would get from the Neanderthals probably wouldn't come for free. So they probably gave them uh, human tools, right? Like bows and arrows that hadn't been, up until that point, hadn't been used outside Africa and the Levant. Uh, apparently, also, Neanderthals previously used much more primitive spears for hunting. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure exactly the date, what the dates are for uh, their tools and um, the kind of tools exactly that they were using. Uh, but so I, I don't know the exact hard dates, but uh, before they met up with humans, uh, Homo sapiens, they were using uh, less. They were less techn technologically advanced. Uh, we know that Neanderthals and humans shared a cave. They hunted. They gathered. They shared info, and then suddenly Neanderthals and the Grot Mandarin were gone. Uh, some people think they got sick, uh, but one thing's for sure: something big and something sudden got rid of them. So I don't know. Some people think all the Homo sapiens won a great war against the Neanderthals. I think it, probably more something more along the lines of the Younger Dryas happens. Obviously not the Younger Dryas, but something like it, some sort of climate shift. Um, maybe some sort of disease that only targeted them, or maybe uh, um, Homo sapiens. Uh, maybe they did conspire to kill every last one, every last Neanderthal. But I think that's a lot less likely. So that, that about does it for this article. Let me know what you guys think. What happened to the Neanderthals? Do you think that the Homo sapiens, do you think they ran into them? Or do you think, without a doubt, they were uh, commingling? Maybe not commingling, but interacting with them in some way. Uh, or were they able to just serendipitously, just as soon as the Neanderthals left and the Homo sapiens came in and there was no interaction? I highly doubt that because most Homo sapiens now have Neanderthal DNA. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. 
vinkeln i kameran. 